Hey guys, this is Nate and this is the Nader Tater channel. So I'm here with my zip line and I'm going to show you a new device that really takes out the only pain point I have with the zip line and that's getting the trolley back to the start. So as you ride the trolley down from the, the high end to the low end, somehow you have to get the trolley back on. This one's not that hard because it's a grass field. I also have a bigger zip line that goes across the pond and that one's a little bit more difficult. So I've shown you how I set up this airtime 100 foot kit, as well as the uh, 250 foot long, um, pro more professional one goes across the pond with videos. And I've shown you a powered, battery powered motorized return. But now I'm gonna show you this new device called the Rerun, also from the same company, that's ziplinegear.com. And they make a lot of great stuff. This is another invention of theirs. And you can see it's actually 3D printed, which is quite, quite neat. Um, all in here now, obviously a couple pieces are not 3D printed, but um, these, uh, these pulleys are, these bulls are. So I'm gonna show you how you set this up and how it works. It requires no battery, you know, um, no power to it, and it's fully automatic. So let me set up real fast on this kit, and then uh, we'll see how it works. All right, so the kit comes with a stop block, and that's a plastic block that split with a rubber bumper so that if you back into it, it has a little bit of a cushion. Then it comes with the hardware. Okay, so once you get the first three in there, you leave that last bottom back one free, and then that's where this rerun uh, pulley system is going to set up. So what you can see with it is this top, the big spool has basically heavy duty fishing line on it. And this bottom one has a strap that uh, gets unwound. And then obviously between them is a little gear um, with belt system on there so that they, they spin. And with the way the gearing is set up, the belt side that you're gonna put a counterweight on spins much slower than the fishing line one. So let me set that up here and then I'll show you how it gets uh, set up to work. All right, so when that's tightened down, it has little um, spacers in there so that this is not, um, you know, held and clamped in place. All the clamp load goes straight to the block. So now what I have to do is take this strap off. You can see how quickly that top spool spins. You do not release that fishing line until it gets all set up here. So let's take this strap down. Now they give you instructions, I have them right here, of how to set this up. Then as well as they give you a table for how long of a um, drop you need. So obviously this one's 100 feet long. So I think I only need about four feet or so um, of distance travel, which luckily I have here. So now I have it all the way unwound and then I'm gonna get my bucket to start with water as my um, my counterweight. So let me, this is another piece that they provide and it's basically a, a strap with a double, um, you know, lock mechanism. So one of them goes on this side and then the other one goes uh, to make a loop around the bucket. Obviously this is a pretty long cord. So this can do up to 500 foot long zip line. That's why this, this uh, nylon webbing is so long if you really wanted to, you could cut this shorter if you needed to after you figure out the right length. All right. Like I said, I know I'm gonna be about four feet. All right, let me put some water in here. All right, so I got my uh, bucket and I got some extra water. So the bucket, Right now, I have about uh, two quarts of water. Now I think 
what I'll do is I'll just add water to it as I get this set up so that I can figure out the exact amount of water that I need. All right, so I have this bucket here and I'm gonna raise it up off the ground slightly. Okay, I have this strap here. So now what I have to do is I have to get this fishing line out to get it set up. So let's see where it's at. Okay, it's right here. So this line is gonna attach directly to your pulley. You can attach it to the carabiner here or you can attach it directly to this hook as well. Um, there are a couple things of note. You do need to have some kind of seat or something on. It's not really designed to work well with the handlebars only. That's because the handlebars can flip around and they're less likely to do that when they have a weight keeping them down. Otherwise, this guy can, uh, especially if you jump off really quickly, it'll bounce and then your uh, fishing line will get stuck. So that is the one thing you do have to watch for is you want to have some kind of weight uh, and you want to be a little bit careful when you let go of the trolley so that it doesn't uh, get all tangled up. All right, so now that I've done that, I have it off the ground already. I'm gonna walk this down. You can see it unwinding. And it's gonna be slowly pulling up. I wanna make sure that this can go all the way to the end without that bucket crashing back into here because that would obviously do damage. So let me walk down there and see what it does. Okay. So you can see I have plenty of space there, which I thought I would have. Um, so it probably only used, looks like maybe three feet of, uh, of space to make this work. And the, um, this webbing, since it wraps along itself, its radius gets bigger as you wind it up. So if you, uh, if you have it all the way pulled out, that's how you, you, you lose the least amount of distance. If you wanted to use more distance and use less weight, for example, you could actually um, have it spooled up some instead of all the way unwinding. But once you tune in this weight, then you can replace the bucket of water with something like a little um, a dumbbell weight or some other, uh, you know, more compact piece of uh, thing that obviously won't change as it evaporates and rains. But what I did here, was I left it alone, you can see it stabilized, it did not return. But I have nothing holding it, this weight's still pulling down. So right now it's about in the lowest part, which is about three quarters of the way between the two trees. And that's when it has to start pulling uphill. So it doesn't have enough weight right now to do that. Well, that's what I want, I want to be on the low end of it. So that's why I have this bucket. I'm just gonna add water until I see this pulley start moving and coming back uphill. There we go. All right, so now I have that set up. You can see it keeps it uh, back here, you know, right about here. Let me ride it now that I know that I have enough travel and then I'll hop off and I'll see how it comes back. All right, so I can see I need more water. All right, so I filled that bucket up and it still wasn't coming back as fast as I wanted it to. So I'm gonna switch to a bigger bucket. Okay, so I had five quarts in there. I'm gonna add another two. All right, so for me, this was about seven quarts of water 
I'll go and weigh that bucket and see how much it weighs and I'll figure out what kind of weight to leave on here. All right, there we go. So that just had it barely bump into that rubber. Uh, that seemed about right. So that's what I'm gonna use now. What's cool about it is that it does slow you down ever so slightly, you can quite tell. This one is my kitty run. So obviously one is very low to the ground as you can see my uh, my butt dragging, but um, it's also not very big of a slope. And so I noticed just slightly, I go a little bit slower, but it's not a lot. Um, that's what's really cool about what they did here because they used all of this weight and the gear ratios um, and then even the changing ratio to the benefit of this to help with pulling it up uh, and slowing it down as it gets closer using the least amount of height possible and then also um, reducing the amount of um, friction or slowing down that it creates going that way because of your ratio it's very easy to pull this um, and since it's all bearings it's not very hard for it to pull it back up this way so really cool device I really like it um, I can uh, now have the kids hop on here before I had to run down there and pull them back up now I just tell them to hop off and they come back here and I can um, not get my exercise anymore so hope you enjoyed this video this does work with pretty much any um, Cable size, they have different uh, stop blocks that you need to get uh, to mount it. But otherwise, this same unit will work, like I said, up to 500 foot long uh, zip line. And then you can tune this guy. They even have a way that you can tune this so that um, it doesn't travel as far. So if you have an area that you can't get the height you need, because like, for example, for my 250 foot one, I'm going to need something like nine feet of vertical travel which I have over there, but if I didn't have it, there is another method you can do where you can strap this um, cord back up to the main zip line, and then your weight will um, ride in that, um, in that strap. So it has half the travel distance, but you need twice the weight to happen. So they've, they've really thought of a lot of different ways to make it work. And if you have any questions, you can contact ziplinegear.com and those guys will really help you. You know, I, I talked to them, they, they informed me how to get this set up. Uh, they sent me this product so I could test it out and show it to you guys. So um, hope you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you wanna see more. And of course, like the video as always. Thanks.